All right. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Wave Lab Workflows. My name is Justin Perkins. Um, thanks for joining today, and thanks for watching this later if you're watching it later. Hopefully everything is dialed in and set up correctly. If there's any issues with the video or sound, feel free to say something in the chat. Today we're going to be talking about all the different places that you can insert plugins within WaveLab Pro, which I know may seem like a basic concept if you're used to something like Cubase or Pro Tools or Logic, where you just have track effects, Master Fader, which is basically another track. But um, WaveLab has a whole lot of different places where you can insert plugins, and I'm going to show you all of them and explain uh, why you may want to use certain spots and why you may want to avoid others for certain situations. I'm going to go over it all as well as some plug-in kind of maintenance and housekeeping as far as um, in installing and uh, organizing your plugins within WaveLab. So looks like we have a few people. Two people from Sweden. Well, thanks for joining us. Again, I'm assuming you can hear me all right if, uh, if you guys are commenting. I'm going to get right into it then. Um, and for those who watch regularly, um, the WaveLab 11.0.2 update should be out um, within a few days, I would say, perhaps early next week at the latest. But that's looking like a great update. A lot of great new features. So... Um, anyways, let's get started about this episode about plugins, and I'm just going to check my notes. So I assume everyone knows how to install plugins, so I'm going to skip that part. But uh, once you have your plugins installed, you can go to the preferences area, and you can do some management of the plugins. And there's a lot of... Um, there's a whole lot of settings here. I may not cover every one in detail, but some big ones that you may want to know is the force plugin detection at next launch. If you're having a problem where a plugin is not uh, showing up, the one thing you can do is force a rescan. Uh, that's usually a good idea if you're having some issues. The main area I want to focus on is the organize tab. And in the organize tab, you can do a whole lot of great things. Let me hide the master section here. I like to sort my plugins by vendor, and you'll see what that means when I get into a session or a project. But some other options are by category, category then vendor, and category would be things like Dynamics, EQ. For me, I just like to see the plugin vendor name. Usually that, that's what I'm thinking of when I want to reach for something. But there's a diff few different ways to organize them, and you can um, create submenus. There's a whole lot of you can get pretty tricky with it. I set this up quite a while ago, and I'm happy with it, so I'm not going to touch it. You can see the ignored plugins. You know, there may be some plugins you don't use in WaveLab, like vocal tuning or drum drum triggering, amp simulations, things like that. Um, and you can turn those off another way. And then if you ever need to see the number of plugins for whatever reason, you can see it right there. So here's all the plugins I have installed. And as you can see, it's each uh, company or vendor has its own folder. And a couple things to just be aware of when you unfold it. Um, there's a lot of cool settings in here. And some of it's going to make a little more sense a little bit later, but I just wanted to cover this first. Um, in WaveLab, WaveLab uses VST2 and VST3 plugins. Um, kind of similar in nature, but VST3 is obviously the more modern version. That's the version I tend to use first. Um, there are a few companies like UAD. You'll see for some reason, they're still only on VST2. They haven't released VST3, but I'm going to show you how you can tell the difference. Let me go back to a smaller folder here. So the, the way you can tell the difference is VST3 has those three slashes, kind of like the backwards Adidas logo, and VST2 does not. So as you can see here with, with these Good Hertz plugins, I have disabled all the VST2 versions because I don't want to see them. It just It's too much to look at. I use VST3. And then you can control where they're visible. And again, this is going to make sense a little bit later, so you may want to jump back to this. But um, in WaveLab, there's a whole lot of places to insert plugins. So 
having the effect box checked is kind of your main one where it's going to show up in a lot of places. Final would be the final effects and dithering in your master section. And I'll explain when and when, when and why you may want to check those. The play button or the play box is the playback processing effects, which I'll explain about those, but that, how you could make it be visible there or not. Um, Dyn is for dynamic processing, and I'm just going to hover over it so you can read it. It says, if, if this plugin is used as a clip plugin, which I also get to, um, the clip is being streamed and deactivated afterwards. So basically, with dynamic turned on, it, it means the plugin is only taxing the CPU or the DSP when that clip is being played. So it kind of saves on CPU and power and things like that. The gen box, this comes up a lot on the forums. Once in a while, for reasons I don't know, this box will be checked. And what that does, uh, gen stands for generic. And that just brings up a generic a GUI. So if you open a plugin and it doesn't look like you're expecting and you just see really generic controls, you want to go into this area and make sure that the gen button is not checked because if it's checked, you'll see those generic controls. Sometimes I've... I've I've seen it happen where for some reason a plugin decides to go into generic mode and you just have to uncheck it and then out. Um, this is just to specify the channel layout in the master section, something I'm probably not going to get into today. But the last one is the crown, which is for favorite plugins. You can designate some favorite plugins, and I'll show you some of my favorite plugins. So basically, this men this area is really a uh, powerful, in my opinion, because as you can see, you can just decide which plugins you want to see. If you have a company that has a bunch of amp simulators, drum triggers, stuff you don't really want to use or see in WaveLab, you can just turn those off so you kind of keep things tidy and organized. And again, you can disable those VST2 versions. Um, just as a side note, if you are ever having a problem with a VST3 plugin, sometimes the VST2 version can work a little better, um, and you can report that problem to the plugin developer. But I try to use VST3 first, and then VST2 as a backup. But as you can see, I have most of my VST2s disabled, so I just don't even see them. So that is the kind of the plugin menu. We'll get to some more fun stuff soon, but I wanted to show the difference between VST2 and 3 and how to organize things. And when you insert plugins, let me see if I have an example here. So when you insert plugins, you can see I haven't disabled some of these yet because it's a new one. You can choose between the VST3 version or the VST2 if, if you have them both enabled. So that's kind of how you know if it's VST2 or 3. So let's kind of get into some of the more fun stuff. Um, so as I mentioned, there's a bunch of different places to insert plugins. I think a lot of people, when they first open WaveLab, they, they sort of get started on the wrong foot sometimes because let's say you open an audio file. Um, your first instinct is going to be to insert plugins in the master section, which does work. And for those that don't know, there's two sections of WaveLab. There's the audio editor and there's the audio montage. I did a video over on wavelabhelp.com that shows the difference between the two. Audio editor is very destructive environment. It might be good for people that are using, um, using WaveLab for sound design or broadcast. I don't really recommend the audio editor for mastering because especially if you have clients that are changing their mind about fades and things, the audio montage is just much more flexible and much more powerful for plug-in usage, which I'll show you. But if you're using the audio editor, again, it's just a, a destructive editor, the only place you can really insert plugins is the master section. And just to kind of double back to my settings um, portion, um, there is this playback processing slot. I guess I'll work backwards. Playback processing is really what it sounds like. It's plugins that are only active and audible or visible on playback, but they do not affect any rendered audio. So it's a good place to put additional metering. It's a good place to put headphone and room correction. 
and other things that you would never want to be part of your render, but you may want to hear or see. So for example, if I go to my plugins here, there's not a lot of options um, because if you go if you go back to the settings and you just look at, let's say the um, fab filter stuff is popular, none of them are assigned to the playback processing section because I really would never want to use them there. Um, whereas the TC Clarity M, I do have that assigned to the playback section with the checkbox because that is something I would want there. So I've had people say, you know, I can't insert sonar works in the playback processing slots and you can, or there's other plugins for ABing your master and this and that. You can put any plugin you want in the playback processing slot, but you do have to go in and, and assign it or make it available there in this section. So um, that's why there's less options right now that you're seeing in, in the uh, playback processing slot. Supervision is new to WaveLab 11, and it's got some great metering options. Um, you can kind of customize things to how you like. I'll show you what that looks like. So this is again one that you can put this plug in anywhere, but I made it available in the playback processing slots because it's something you wouldn't want to be in your render path, but you may want to look at on the same or different screen. Let's just work our way up. Well, I'm going to actually go back to the top now. Effects is the main area where you'd want to insert, say, an EQ compressor or whatever you'd like. And as you can see, there's a whole lot more plugins available in this area because of how they're assigned. You know, I can see all my fab filter and you can just insert plugins, you know, as you wish. And I forget what the limit is now. He might have increased it to 15 um, slots. There's a whole lot. You can just keep adding plugins, you know, more and more uh, plugins. It'll it'll the, the section will keep getting progressively bigger. I think it's up to 15 plugin slots now, just in the effects section alone. Resampling is not a feature I use because of how I work, but um, you can turn resampling on if, if your source files are a high sample rate, but you want to monitor and render to 44.1. And that is exactly why um, after, this is the meters, which I have hidden, after the resampling, we have another little section called Final Effects and Dithering. And this is where you would maybe want to put a true peak limiter and then a final dither because the if you're using resampling, because no matter what bit depth you start with, um, the resampling is going to um, cause it to be floating point bit depth. So you likely want to dither to 24 or 16 bit after the resampling occurs if you're using that. And then prior to the dither, um, you know, resampling does change the peak level ever so slightly by a fraction of a decibel. So the reason this is there is you may want to insert a, some kind of true peak limiter followed by a, a, a dither, and then you know you're safe to render while downsampling or resampling. Um, I particularly don't use this because of my specific workflow, but it is there for those that do resampling in the master section, and then. Um, need to insert a final limiter and dither. And again, we have the playback processing. So that's a bunch of places you can put plugins. And again, this is just for the audio editor, something I don't find myself using, but if you're in broadcast or sound design and you want to just work on one file and have this, the plugins be right here, it's a really direct way to work, but it's not a great way to master EPs and albums or even singles I still do in the montage. But um, as far as be, once you're happy with your settings, there's a few things you can do. You can, you can save this as a preset. This is something I would do more for like a starting point. Let's say you have a few different types of workflows that you do. And for this one, you have a plug-in chain that works well for this type of music or whether it's voiceover versus music or voiceover versus who knows. So this is where you would save like a general... You wouldn't want to use this for every song because this you work on or project because this list of presets would get huge. But it's a place to have a good starting points or things like that. There's this menu here, and you can save as and type in the name of what you want. Um, if you're 
if you're just trying to save the settings for this particular song, there's a better way. And before I get into that, I want to show you the setting regarding that. Because if you don't check out this setting, you could find yourself in trouble if you, um, you know, change computers or get a new computer or want to open the file on a different computer. So let me show you this setting. And it is in um, audio files. It's in the display setting, and it's maybe not the best place for it, but um, audio files, you know, standalone WAV files have a companion file. And the companion file saves things like the view settings that you like, the zoom where you're at, but it will also save the plugin, uh, the master section chain. So by default, I believe this is on, and it saves it in an independent folder somewhere in the the abyss of your operating system that would be hard to find. And again, you, you won't notice a problem if you just are on the same computer and you want to save and load the master section, it'll be there. You could run into trouble when you get a new computer or move computers. So I suggest unchecking this box. Um, and then that, that means when you go to save the master section settings, the... WaveLab is going to create a companion file that saves all these for you. So this is where WaveLab is a little different than most programs. And I'm going to try to get to the montage because that's more fun and detailed. But if you're just using a, the audio editor, one file at a time. And the reason this is dangerous is because if I open a different file and press play, it's going to be going through the same set. It, you know, The master section is global. I like to call it the global master section because it's playing through whatever whatever file is playing it's going through it so you have to be really careful when switching files when we're, when using the master section that the correct settings are loaded but let's get back to one file at a time let's say I'm happy with these settings um, down here this little star and you can assign shortcuts to, for these but you want to save the master section preset and there's a few options here, save effects, plugins, reset, basically saving everything. And I'm going to press save. And I, I was practicing, so the one exists. But if we toggle to the finder, and we look at where this came from, actually, this came from a different place. Let me... This is what I meant to do. So let's say we want to save this. Now I've, I've saved all these settings. And as you can see, it saves a little companion file. And it's got a slightly different name. It's the name of the file plus the wave extension plus VS. That is the companion file. It's very small. You don't have to worry about the size. But that saves the view settings and the plugin chain. So that if I were to um, clear this, let me... Reset the master section to totally empty. What I can do then is go to the star down here and load the master section. And everything comes back how I left it. So this is a little dangerous for my brain because you have to really be careful to save and load the master section. You know, I think we're all used to just opening a file and everything is how we left it. With, with this operation here you do have to manually load and save the master section. So while that does work, it also leaves room for human error. If you forget to save something before you close it, um, you know that you could be disappointed when you revisit that file. But that is how, with the audio editor, that's how you have to do plugins, is only in the master section. That's all we have. I'm gonna see, I thought there was a question here. I think it was re uh, deleted. So, um, that's basically all I want to go over with the audio editor side of things. Now, there are some settings in the master section itself um, to use a plug-in chain window, which I'll show you when we get to the montage, but I like the plug-in chain window. You can restore the last configuration at next startup. This is where some people get into trouble. If you have a buggy plug-in and you quit WaveLab and then you try to reopen WaveLab, Sometimes a buggy plugin could cause WaveLab to crash because it keeps trying to restore that um, master section setting. So for I like to tell people to leave this off. If you're using the master section for some serious plugin work, 
because you I I would prefer to start it with a clean slate so that you're not loading in a buggy plugin or opening WaveLab and opening a file and realize that you still have some master section plugins from a different file. I personally use the restore last configuration at next startup because the only plugin I normally have in my daily workflow is this TC plugin in the playback processing slot. Um, and what I like about that is every time I open WaveLab, it's loaded and talking to my Clarity M meter. I don't have to reload it every time. So if you use Sonarworks or headphone or room correction, it's nice in the sense if you use it this way that you can just open WaveLab and those plugins are already loaded and ready for you, but they're, you can be sure they're not going to affect the output of a file if you render it. So I, I like to use the setting of restore last configuration because I know that this is a safe plugin. Um, but those are some choices in the master section. Um, so let's get on to the audio montage because there's a whole lot more to talk about there as far as where you can insert plugins. And this is where I would, um, like I mentioned, even singles I master here, but also um, EPs and albums. This is the place to do mastering, um, in my opinion. In my opinion, the audio montage is WaveLab. Um, the audio editor is nice for certain things, but I really don't use it much. And before I get too far into it and forget, um, there is a batch processor in WaveLab. So you could um, create a new batch processor. You can load in um, a ton of plugins, even some saved chains. But if you d um, just need to process a bunch of files with plugins things like that, or change the format. There is a batch processor, and, and those do load um, plugins. Let me try to find a simple one. So you can load the... Uh, we did a... Me and Ian Stewart, I should say, Ian Stewart and I, we both... We did a batch processor video, so you can go back and watch that and how to use that batch processor. But I did want to point out that is that is another place to insert plugins if you just want to do some batch processing um, it's a good place to do it. So the audio montage, this has a whole lot of places to insert plugins. So we should probably get started. And as you can probably notice, I keep the master section floating and hidden because I really just do not use the master section because same with the audio montage, you do have to load and save this master section with the montage if you're using it with the montage. That's why I purposely don't rely on it for montage work. Some people like to use it, and that's fine. You just have to remember to, again, load and save it manually with each montage. That doesn't really work with my brain. I'm, I know that I'm going to forget something. So that's why I keep it empty aside from this meter and hide it. I get more screen space. For me, it's a, it's a win. So let's say I'm going to open up some files here so I can show you everything. But let's say I'm mastering an EP, and I want to lay it out like this. I'll just name it something. Plugin video test. So I'm not going to get into mastering and all that stuff. I've done it in plenty of other videos. I really want to just focus on plugins themselves today and all the places you can insert them. And just to be clear, the master section comes after everything in the montage. So even if you were to use the master section, it's going to come after everything I'm about to show you here. So again, I just keep that hidden. In the montage, there's, with WaveLab 11, there's now four places. I, I still think of it as three places, and the fourth one is a nice bonus that I'll show you um, once we get some stuff happening here. But the, the main three places where you can insert plugins in the audio montage, which again is a non-destructive environment for... Um, mastering. So, of course, you, you can um, edit something and it's not destructive. I could undo that. Um, it's just a great place to do mastering work. So, th let's say these are my songs I'm mastering. Again, I know it's very tempting to just insert plugins in the master section because it's the biggest, easiest spot, but if you understand how the montage works, it gets even better. The three main places to insert plugins are the clip level, which is up here, and the inspector. 
Now, I have WaveLab set up a very certain way. If you're using the default settings, the inspector and master section are sort of um, together here in this area. As I mentioned, the master section is global. It's kind of last in the chain. It affects anything that's being played back. The inspector is unique to each montage. So if I had multiple montages open, such as this one, the inspector is going to change, but the master section would stay the same. This is an in-the-box project, so it's got a lot of plugins happening. But as you can see, when I switch between the two projects, the inspector changes because those are within the montage. If I go to the master section, it stays the same um, because that is after everything. So let me get back to what I was talking about here. I like to use this layout just because it's kind of a more legacy what I'm used to. And you want to be, whatever your layout is, you want to be paying attention to the inspector. Th um, three main places plus this new group section. So the clip section lets you put plugins right on each clip, which for me would be each song. And that's really an important feature for a mastering program. Um, this allows you to put a special plugin chain right on each song without having to have a bunch of tracks. You know, sometimes I see people mastering a project and um, they have their session looking kind of like this. And for me, that's just such an inefficient layout because the waveforms get so small. Um, you could, if you're putting plugins on each track, you might be taxing your CPU more than you need to because it might be running plugins in this area where there's no audio. So for me, I just, I can't do this layout because it just, everything's so small and inefficient. So again, when you're mastering WaveLab, you can even do this on one single track if you wanted to, because again, we're going to use plugins right on each clip. But I'm going to go back to my preferred layout, which now is using lanes. Now that WaveLab 11 has lanes. So again, clip effects. We also have track effects. Now track effects are not something I use a lot because um, I actually use them more now that we have lanes, but track effects are not referring to CD tracks or album tracks or anything like that. Track effects are simply referring to the audio montage track, which I only have one, but I could have multiple montage tracks if I needed to. Uh, so the kind of amber, yellowish, orangish color is for track effects. And those, and it, it goes in order. Clip effects are first. After all, the clip effects would be any track effects that you have inserted. Um, and then after that is, well, we have the group, which I'll get to. It's kind of a special thing. Let me delete all these tracks now. And then after the track effects, which again, I only use in kind of special cases, and then montage output. This is kind of like your master fader. This is the master output for this montage. And this is where you could put something like a final limiter, your final dithering, anything that you want to affect all the songs. And, and not only all the songs, but after um, all the clip effects. So you kind of need to unthink about how you normally think about plugins in a mixing and mass, or sorry, a mixing and recording DAW, and kind of learn about mastering context. So let's say I wanted to start by EQing just this song. Again, if I if I start EQing just this song with the master section, every song is going to get that EQ, and that's bad. So I would click on this first song and I would make sure the clip effects tab is highlighted in green. And then I can go to my plugin menu and search for a plugin that I like either manually or there is an actual search button. I could, ooh, I could type in master rig and there's the Steinberg master rig. Um, so now if I were to EQ something, I'm going to do do something very fast and stupid. Um, as you can see, when I play the first song, it's it's being EQ'd or whatever is happening. If I play the second song, it's not processing through there because I haven't inserted any clip effects on this song yet. So 
Again, clip effects are a really, really powerful tool within WaveLab. I think a lot of people don't quite understand them at first when they first start using WaveLab, but to me, it's one of the big reasons why I use WaveLab is clip effects for mastering are very powerful. So of course you can add many, I believe it's up to at least 10 or 12 slots total. So you can keep adding effects. Um, it just, it keeps um, making slots for you. Um, and you can do whatever you want. And of course this is all saved within the montage. So if I close it and reopen it, everything is definitely there. I don't have to worry about the saving it separately like the master section. So for me, the montage is the way to go for basically all, all work. And for those that haven't watched the montage videos, um, the montage saves right next to the wave files. It's a small file. It's only 62, 63 kilobytes right now. This is sort of like your session file. If you had Cubase or Logic or Pro Tools, this tells WaveLab what files it needs and how to arrange them, all the settings. So clip effects are kind of what I reach for first when I'm mastering a song, and you know, I, I like how it sounds. Track effects I'm not going to use in this context. Output effects, this could be where you put something like your final limiter. And I'm using a preset chain, which I'll show you. And speaking of chains, WaveLab has a great feature called the plugin um, window chain. As you can see, I don't have a big mess of plugins on my screen. I have nice tabs. And to get that, you actually do it in the master section, but you use, you check this option, plugin chain window. And when you use that, um, you get a nice tabbed window here. Now you can, of course, rearrange the order of the plugins and things like that. You can copy, you can copy the selected plugin or them all. And then you could highlight all the other songs and you could use uh, paste to selected clips. And now all the songs have this same plugin setting. Maybe it's a good starting point if all the songs sound very similar. And there's a whole lot of other things. I'm just gonna check my notes here. Um, yeah, so let's keep going in this section. Um, each plugin, you can save a preset. So if you um, have a good starting point, for me it's this with with this particular plugin. It's not doing anything, but there's some popular EQ points and I have some of the other settings set how I like. I've saved that as a preset. So um, when you, if you got something you like, you can obviously save this as and type in what you want and it will appear in this menu. You can have a whole bunch of presets. One really cool thing with WaveLab 11 is saving a default preset. Now, a lot of plugins have a default preset. So when you insert it, it's set how you defined, but some don't. One of them being this, um, this great plugin. In my opinion, the default settings were horrible for mastering. It, was, it sounded like a distortion pedal. So what I did is I, I always had my own kind of starting point preset in here. But now that we have WaveLab 11, what I did is I go to the default preset menu, save as default preset. And I'm gonna press cancel because I've already done it. But what that does is the moment that plugin is inserted, it's set how I like it. Um, and that's a really cool feature for plugins that don't have a default setting. This will save you a lot of time. Um, if, if you find yourself always spending a few moments getting a plug into a certain starting point before you even think about what you want to do with it, this will be a big time saver. You can save plugin chains. So let's say I like this. Now this is terrible. This is not something I use, but let's say I like this chain for maybe a starting point for a rock song. You can go to the save plugin chain and there's shortcuts for all this, but you could save this as a plugin chain and name it what you want. By default, it goes by uh, the song title. But this saves in your preferences folder. And um, that way you have all these. Um, see, I have all these plugin chain presets that I've stored. 
for various things. Some are for clip effects to get started. Some are for montage output effects. Some are for after I render and I just want to dither, um, things like that. So let me load a different, that's the save button. You can go to the load. And again, there's shortcuts for all this, but you, know, you can load a plugin. You can load an entire plugin chain. And this plugin chain stuff with the combination of the meta normalizer, which I've talked about in other videos, between the meta normalizer, plugin chain presets, I can get stuff level wise. Like I know it's going to be somewhat in the ballpark, even without even before I press play, because I've non destructively normalized all the songs to a certain level that's going to feed the clip effects at a certain level. And even do, I have it so that it's just starting to do a little bit of gain reduction with my compressor and DSer, which has a dynamic threshold. But you know, look at that. I didn't even listen to it yet, and I've loaded some presets that I have, and it's already minus 11, which is, you know, I can go louder. I can keep it there. That's my decision when I work on it. But this gets you in the ballpark super fast for level-wise. So, um, and again, this is all saved. So if I close this, reopen it, everything comes back 100%. So I'm using shortcuts to, ta to toggle between the... Um, Windows, I, I use shortcuts to, to load um, my, my plugin presets. It makes it all very quick work. So those are kind of the main three places you can insert plugins in the montage. And um, I'm just going to check my notes again. I want to go over the um, group effects because that's new to WaveLab 11. Well, let's talk about, before I get move on, let's talk about... I could do a whole episode on automation, so I'm not going to get into it too far, but WaveLab 11 did introduce plugin automation. And for right now, it's only available for clip effects. So, and again, as a reminder, clip effects are first. So I can have special settings per song. You know, this, the song, every song kind of needs its own settings, obviously for EQ, dynamics, saturation, you know, obviously you, would work on each song um, specifically and independently, but you could, if you get things dialed in right, you can get away with kind of one global limiter that's doing a little bit of work to uh, just raise the level a little bit, get it where you want it, things like that. And the, again, this comes last, and this does affect everything. So no matter what clip I play, you're going to see it. Um, so this is kind of like your master fader if you're thinking of it in terms of a, Mixing DAW, everything travels through this. So, but back to automation, we do have clip effect automation. So if I needed to automate an EQ move, you know, I could, the fastest way is to right click on a uh, control. So I can right click on that. And now that's gonna add an automation um, envelope up in here. And I can use the envelope to automate this. So let's watch the EQ change happen. You can see the EQ is rising. It reaches its peak here, and now it's coming back down. Um, I'll do a whole episode on automation, but that is where you automate plugins in the um, clip section only right now. There are some cool features in the menu if you really dig around there is a b so you can a b your settings if you want to so i i right right now is in setting a if i said well maybe it needs a little less so this now it's in b and i can switch between a and b and decide which one's better obviously that's really extreme i'm just doing really extreme examples you can undo changes you can bypass of course but one really cool one is you can choose the channel processing so right now it's set to stereo a lot of plugins do have mid side built in now these days but some don't in particular um, this older sonix deesser um, if i wanted this to only affect the center channel i could change it to mid and it's more complicated than that but i'm essentially only affecting um, 
the center channel sibilance and I'm letting the sides do what they would normally do. So you can choose stereo, you know, mid side, left only, right only, mid, side only. Um, it gets kind of complex, but um, that is a cool little hidden feature that sometimes I forget about myself um, in WaveLab. Speaking of levels and automation, clip effects can be before or after the volume automation. So let's say you've done some volume automation on a song. You can, you can decide if the envelope is before or after the um, effects. And I, I believe it changed in WaveLab 11, so bear with me here while I, while I find it again. Because it used to be right here. Oh yeah, here, they, they moved it up here. So it's this button right here. The volume, so this is just for the volume envelope alone. It can be before or after your effects. So, you know, if you've dialed in your dynamics really nicely and you don't want that to change, you may want this to be after the effects. But, um, you know, if you have a song that's too dynamic and you want to feed more level into the you know, compressor, you, you would want the envelope to be before the clip effects. So um, this is just a nice little option to have. Um, to control whether your clip effects are before or after your volume or your level automation. I, I find that most of the time I'm doing it bef the level automation before the effects because it's usually related to, you know, dynamics and things like that. But if for some reason you don't want, you've got your compression, de everything exactly how you want it, you can change this to after and then any level changes will come after the... Um, clip effects chain it'll still be before your master your montage output effects it'll still be before your track effects but it will at least be you have some management there with clip effects are just really powerful um, let's jump back over to the master section even though i'm not using it there is one cool little feature um, in the master section you can bypass the effect that's pretty standard but you can also kind of listen to the effect only or the delta signal. So that's kind of a cool feature. It's only in the master section right now. But if you want to hear just what the compressor or saturation or EQ is adding to the signal, you can do that. That can be helpful for dialing in certain things. Um, this also has the channel processing and everything like that as well. So those are kind of the main areas where you would add... Um, effects. I'm, I still have a few more points to make, but those are kind of the main things. So just to kind of summarize, the audio editor, you can only use the master section, and you have to save and load the section, uh, the uh, settings manually. So again, some people are okay with that. Some people might forget. But if you're using the audio editor, that's your only choice. So, and again, you have to be very careful about this independent folder setting so that when you do this, it saves the file, the companion file right next to the wave file. That way, if you back up your project to an archive system, um, you still have that companion file next to the wave file. You're not going to lose it. Or if your computer crashes, because if, if you do choose to save an independent folder, as you can see, it's a very, and it's for some reason showing wave lab nine, but it's a very, hidden folder in your cache that you're never going to think to back up. Um, so my suggestion is to not save an independent folder. So audio editor, you only have the master section to, to work with. You manually save and load it. Um, and again, that's because you can have many WAV files open and whatever the master section is doing, as you can see, Let's just do something with the threshold. Well, as you can see, as I play different files, the, the setting stays the same. So it's just an interesting way of, of doing it. So that's why I just prefer everything to be in the montage. 
Now, if you do decide to use the master section with your montage, here's what that looks like. Uh, again, you go to the star, save master section preset. Those are the options. That is now stored within the montage file. You can't really see it, but it's safely stored within the montage. You don't get a separate companion file in this case. It's stored right inside this montage. That's why it got a little bit bigger there. Um, but again, if you close it, it's still there for the next file that you open. So that's where it can get a little... You just have to be a little more careful and manually manage things. But let's say I cleared it and did some other work and I come back to this project it needs a revision or something as you can see the master section did not load and sorry my uh, iPad stopped connecting so I think we're still rolling the master section did not load. When I open the project, I have to go down to the star and load master section preset. And now it comes back. So again, for, for me, the two-step thing is just a little hard to get my head around. So I don't, I try to avoid it at all costs. I just want to reconnect here so I can see the stream. Great. Um, sorry about that. So again, you can use the master section in the montage. You just have to manually load um, and save it. Now, there is one other setting to be aware of when it comes to this. Preferences, this time you go to the montage. Um, you can have it automatically save the master section. I'll show you that help. You can have it auto save the master section when you quit, when you close the montage. But again, you still have to reload it. For me, I don't know why I don't trust this as much. It's just not something I've ever got my head around. But it is there. You, you can at least have it auto save the montage master section when you close it. But you still, again, have to reload it manually. I just this is not a workflow that I particularly care for. But I know some people that do like it for various reasons. So to each their own. But that is one last little setting I wanted to mention. And again, you can save presets as starting points um, and things like that up in this section. So before I go to any questions, if anyone has any questions, feel free to type them in the chat. But um, just checking my notes. I believe I covered everything here. I just kind of wanted to double back and also point out, again, with the preset saving and loading, you can save nice specific plugin chains you can copy full you, know, you can copy just a couple like these three effects you can select them and copy or you can copy all and you can very quickly paste them to other clips you can paste paste them all around to you know the master section um, all sorts of great things so Again, the montage is just my preferred way to do all this. And let's talk about track grouping. That's the one thing I didn't get to. It's a new feature for WaveLab 11. And not a feature I use a lot, so I may be a little slow at this, but I at least want to walk you through it. Let's say I'm going to clear all these. It's probably more useful for stem mastering. There's a lot of different use cases for it, but let me just show you how it works and you can go from there. Now these are not stems, but let's say they were. Pretend that was maybe a vocal and instrumental. And we have two tracks here. So let's say this was a vocal and instrumental you can still do your clip effects. You can still do your track effects, but now we have track group effects. So I could select those two tracks. I could add selected tracks to group. And I can name it um, whatever I want to name it. I'm just going to name it that. So now you see this group section is enabled. So you still can do clip effects. 
You can still do track effects. But now before it hits the master or the montage output, we have this group section. So let me just insert something basic so we can see the meter is moving. As you can see, these two tracks are traveling through this group. If I were to put another file here, and I'll play it where it doesn't exist. As you can see, this one is not traveling through that group. Um, it's not assigned to a group. So any plugins in the group section that you've defined are only going to affect the, the group tracks. You can see the blue um, color icon to help you out. So I personally haven't really had the need for this in my workflow, but it's a cool feature for people probably doing stem mastering or other types of production that just need one more layer of effects um, within the montage. Um, so I think that is a great feature uh, addition. And you can do all the same things that you would otherwise. You can copy, do plugins, and all sorts of good stuff. So anyways, I'm going to turn it over to any questions anybody has because I've covered all my notes. I just thought it'd be good to do a really focused video on just all the places to do plugins in WaveLab because it, it is quite different than a, a mixing and recording DAW. And for me, it's a big part of why I use WaveLab for mastering because, like I said, because of the clip effects. Let me open up a different project. It's a little lighter. Um, and again, I got to remove this master rig because it was in there from a different project. You got to be kind of careful about that, but you know, I, this is a typical layout for an EP for me, and um, the the fact that you can, um, even if you capture from analog and you got it closely dialed in, you know, you can still add a little EQ just for that song or a little EQ for that one, and then a final limiter for all of them. So for me, the montage is the way to go. It doesn't seem like there's any questions, so I guess I'm going to close it down. If anybody has any questions that they think of later, or if you're watching this later, there is a Facebook group called Wave Lab Users Group, and you can find it on Facebook by searching for it. Myself and others are always help, happy to help with any questions there. There's an official Wave Lab forum on the Steinberg website, a lot of great help and resources there. There's the Wave Lab Help website, uh, wavelabhelp.com with this video will be there and all the other ones that I've done. You can also download a number of my settings and presets and all this stuff to help you get your setup going sooner. And again, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, we'll be back probably next month. Yeah. In fact, I will be back next month. I'm going to do what's new in wave lab 10.0.2 because in my opinion, it's, it's much more than a maintenance update. It's got a lot of cool, new features that I, I think are worthy of an entire video, um, in my opinion. So in December, I'm going to be doing what's new in version 11.02. So watch for that. It'll, it'll be before Christmas. Um, so it'll be in just a couple weeks, actually. Um, so watch for that in December. And then there'll be some new stuff coming in January and a couple guests, some wave lab users that you'll recognize the name of do some more interviews. And again, thanks for watching. Thanks for using WaveLab, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.